Welcome back to our E3 2018 episode of Downloadable Content. We are all still here, and I hope all of you listeners are. Ronnie is making sure of that. I'm, I, I'm watching you as you sleep. Suddenly this became Twilight. <laughs> uh, I was thinking more Resident Evil Nemesis, but, you know, I suppose I could be a sparkly vampire hunting you down as you don't watch our press conferences. <laughs> so, moving right along then, diving right back into the, the E3 goodness. Um, the next major press conference that went was Square Enix. And I say major, but I think they were up for all of, what, 25, 30 minutes? 30 minutes, I think, tops. Yeah. This was the shortest. There's, this was the shortest. And, but obviously they showed off some stuff. I, I don't like to say short. I would rather say concentrated. I like that. It, it, uh, all juice, no filler. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> d- d- distilled Square Enix. Not, not... I, 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 my, my notes on the co- press conference itself, my general feeling for the Square Enix press conference was we exist. And they wanted to remind <laughs> people of that. that and, we're relevant! It, and I appreciate it was Nintendo Direct style. I also really think, you know, after... Because this press conference uh, went... Uh, I was at work. So I, I'm, I couldn't actually watch the conference as it was going. So I was, you know, watching the reaction on Twitter. And a lot of people got actually kind of pissed for for square enix you know because they they're like that's it okay well let's because there was no games we wanted to see where's ff7 i mean you're not wrong but uh (laughs) (laughs) that was uh, uh, basically people were uh, people on twitter were belly aching over no final fantasy 7 remake news and apparently they're making an avengers game that got yeah that, I, I, that got no airtime. I heard whispers of that, but I've never seen anything like that. Uh, whispers and rumors. <laughs> but well, there was a trailer for it last E three, and there was no information being told about it since. So people don't know what happened to it. They thought that this year's um, showcase would have information on it, and it didn't. So that's why people are like, "Where did this game go?" Well, to be fair, I almost feel like that's an unfortunate part of being a Square fan, is that it takes patience. And, <laughs> I mean, it's true. It's so true. <laughs> it's very true. And I, 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 love the, I love the complete concession you had for that. <laughs> that is very true. That's probably the line of the podcast right there. To be a Square <laughs> Enix fan, you need patience. You need patience. <laughs> just, just that. We kind of rip our flesh and pour salt in the wounds every now and again, but the, the end result is worth it. We promise. I mean, they finally announced Dragon Quest XI coming to America's shores three years yes. after it's been out in Japan. Uh-huh. Yeah. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of good things in this press conference. Oh, just yeah. Allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brian will not believe anything of Square Enix comes out until... After it's on shelves. Oh no, I've been burned too many times by Square. Okay, yes, Shanna's right. To be a Square Enix fan, you need to require patience. I've run out of patience. <laughs> so that, that's why you've abandoned Square Enix for Nintendo. You dirty. Wait, what? <laughs> I was gonna say I've been a Nintendo fanboy for almost thirty I about, years. I, mean, I was just, about to say you're not winning that argument. I'm like, <laughs> I was gonna say. It, it, to, to get into the meat of the of their showcase, they had Tomb Raider. Yep. Which, Uncharted Tomb Raider. <laughs> yeah, the Uncharted Tomb Raider, which had some weird rendering and lighting issue, it looked like. Tomb Raider, it's still a thing. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah that, that was basically my, my feeling was, hey, Tomb Raider, hey, we still have it. And then there was... Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah, yeah, with the Storm Blood. Yep, with, with, the, with the Ivalice... Uh, Expansion to Stormblood, which is going to have crossovers with the uh, Final Fantasy Tactics stuff. And then we got 
the Monster Hunter crossover where you're going to be fighting a Rathalon. Yay! And here was my dumb moment of it. It's like, oh, Monster Hunter. Well, that makes sense. You know, the, the two crossing over, they're the same franchise. Nick, Monster Hunter World is Capcom, you dipshit. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. So, another thing, too, is they're also doing a similar thing with Monster Hunter, and they're having the Behemoth be a, a huntable monster event going yep. on right now in um, Monster Hunter World. Yep, it's a double crossover. One, both, one for each. Yep. Well, it seems like Square's kind of getting into this game a little bit more with the crossovers. Yeah. Uh, just for example... Uh, the Yokai the, Watch crossover for 14. And the um, Assassin's Creed DLC in Final Fantasy 15. Okay. That, so. I did not actually know about that one. Oh, yeah. I don't know if it's still going on, but they did have a DLC at one point where if you go to Altitia in 15, mm-hmm. they're having an Assassin's Creed festival. And yeah. It's kind of adorable because Noctis completely fanboys out over it. Because <laughs> the the Final Fantasy uh, the Final Fantasy four time Yokai Watch expansion uh, crossover, I had to uh, I had to go out there and grind out my my cute little demon girl for the game because of course I I have to. Be- because yes, Ronnie, you have a type. Because yes, if you Brian, if you saw that Yokai Watch character, you would know why. You'd be like, oh yes, that's exactly who Ronnie's going after. Of uh, course. Uh, <laughs> Um, they did a little more Captain Spirit, which, you know, just for the people who missed it on, uh, on, uh, Microsoft's conference. Yeah. Then they had, uh, another trailer for Kingdom Hearts 3. Yep. Uh, Dragon Quest 11. Finally getting, finally getting the U.S. release date. I don't, I don't care. It took several years. I'm just glad it's a it's year after coming. the initial release. Well, we've I'm lost over Kingdom Hearts it's... 3. I'm just glad it's coming stateside because it's Dragon Quest for me is what Final Fantasy used to be. It is good, wholesome JRPG comfort food. Allegedly, I'm not disagreeing, I'm not disagreeing with you. It's just a, it's just a thing of like, I, I Square and, I, and to a lesser extent, you know, to a greater extent, Nintendo, they answered more to their Japanese shareholders. Just due to the fact that they are wholly Japanese, by and large. Mm-hmm. So they don't really care about the Western audience as much as EA, Bethesda, well, Microsoft. They, they so. care even, about if they, even, if they, even if they didn't want to do English voiceover acting, you know, that's fine. Just, you know, translate it Japanese to English. That doesn't take that long. And just bring it over. There are going it. to be buyers worldwide, and even if it took a couple of years, that's fine. I'm going to get my hands on Dragon Quest XI. Dragon, Dragon Quest needs to have one game that blows up over here, and we'll start getting them immediately. But up until this point, like I'm pretty sure the last Dragon Quest game that came out here sold better in Europe than America, and that never happens. Well, so You're very right. It's very niche here. It's niche here, but their 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 last quote unquote big blow up was Dragon Quest VIII, and that's because it came with a demo of Final Fantasy XII. Well, that and it was uh, it was right around the same time that Dragon Ball Z was getting really big here in America, and since Toriyama does the artwork for both, mm-hmm. and, you know everyone was like, "Oh, this looks very Dragon Ball Z esque. Mm-hmm. I want to see what this is." Oh, and they didn't, and they didn't keep them. Obviously. <laughs> well, keep in mind too. Keep in mind too that after Dragon Quest VIII, which was on PS2, Dragon Quest IX was on the was on the on the no. DS or 3DS. Yeah. I can't remember which. No DS, and that was years later. Yeah, and then Dragon Quest X was Never a multiplayer game on the Wii. Yep, online. It was it's, a Wii only MMO. Yeah. I don't get me wrong. I'm not dissing Dragon Quest. I want it to be a success, but. I get why there's the delays and all the stuff and bringing them over here because to this point, like, yeah, they make their money back, but they don't make a whole lot out of putting it out in North America. So, like, we need one big hit for Dragon Quest and it'll stop being the second class citizen of Square Enix. Yeah, I mean, it's... Well, it's the, not a second-class uh, citizen, it's a second-class Western citizen. It's still a first-class in, in Japan. Well, yeah, it's no, still, but I mean, no, I'm talking about over here. Specific. Well, well, okay. Let's let's break this down and have a little bit of a look here. Uh, 
Do we really oh, want to break it down in the middle of a press conference? Yeah, dra 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 <laughs> it's getting serious. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, I'm seeing the sales now. I'm going to shut the fuck up, and we're going to move on. Yeah, uh, uh, you just cut off Professor Whitford's lecture on Dragon Quest. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm, see I'm seeing the numbers now, and it's... It, it, it's it's depressing. It's not what you thought they were. <laughs> it's depressing. Yeah, like, that's... Like, like, like I'm sad, and I'm so glad I'm on my meds right now. Or I'd I'm... just be go grabbing a noose. Tr trust me, Nick. I, I do know what I'm talking about on this. I want it to be a success, but they really need to hit it out of the park with the game for it to they, start getting the attention. And, and, they, and you know, here. because it's steeped in its tradition and doesn't step out of its bounds like Final Fantasy does that reinvents the wheel every goddamn time that they make a new game, it, it's never going to reach that level of success more than likely because Dragon Quest is so steeped in tradition. Yeah, which Final Fantasy may reinvent itself every time, but that makes every Final Fantasy a really easy place to jump into the series. Because it reinvents itself. At least it's coming out for PC. Thumbs up. Yeah, 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 just a tentative yay. Um. <laughs> well, that's the version I'm getting. Yeah. I, I don't know about you. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, I, I feel like we really glossed over Kingdom Hearts earlier. Oh, don't worry. Oh, we're getting there. We're, we're, oh, we're, getting, okay. there. we're getting there. Okay. And, and, and if we yeah. don't, Shanna's going to pull this podcast right back. <laughs> yeah. So, so and another so, thing. <laughs> so 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 please someone remind me what else was in Sony's or Square, Square Enix's press conference. Which Octopath. Interesting. Octopath. Octopath. Yeah. Uh, okay. We're all talking at the Crash. same time. Rock yeah. paper scissors. Yeah 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 yeah. You <laughs> completely ignored the please indicate in the chat. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, we got well. We've gotten this far without it. We'll be fine. Well, well yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll be fine. Um, yes, Octopath Traveler, which I'm looking forward to on the Switch. That looks like looks, a lot of fun. It really does. Like it's a more a, a far darker and more serious RPG than a lot of the fare we see right now. Which don't get me wrong, I like the bright and fun RPGs, but like I think I'm ready for Octopath Traveler. Like this looks like it's gonna be pretty sweet. There's still a couple and, light hearted moments in it, but it is definitely a darker tone that they're going for compared yeah. to yeah, yeah, I saw the I saw the demo, so. Yeah, anytime Square comes out with a new IP, it's like I, I pay more than just a little attention to. So Octopath has my attention and I'm going to pick it up. It looks yeah, especially since it's made by the Bravely Default guys. That's that that's an instant okay. Yeah, my they, attention. They know what they're doing. Like they, yeah. I, I think I think the main selling point for Octopath Traveler is the art style because it's this weird like two D three D sort of art, and everything's kind of like it's flat. For the characters, but you're moving through a 3D area. It's, it's like it's like that short Paper Man. If you saw that, what so it, they're blending the two and the 3D. What it reminded me of a bit was Bastion. That was my first thought. Yeah, it's Ooh. actually. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, I don't, but you do. You. <laughs> you really did not like Bastion, did you, Nick? I wish I could get into it more, but I don't really see the similarities in the art styles for um, uh, for Octopath Traveler and Bastion. So, uh, that, but that's just me. Okay. Um, uh, I remember they announced uh, Quiet Man and Babylon's Fall. Yeah, Babylon's Fall looks interesting, although we really did get much more outside of it exists. Yeah, we need more information out of it. People are theorizing it might be so, sort of like Dragon's Crown sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and then there was the Quiet Man, which a bit more information came out of it after the conference. Is this going to be this weird... So you remember with um, Quantum Break, they had this sort of game where you had both like a TV, TV series interspliced with the normal gameplay. They're doing a similar thing with Quiet Man, where they're going to have like live action leading up into the actual combat and then have the yeah. combat be c CG. 
I guess it's supposed to be like a movie length game, so it's only gonna last a couple of hours. So I don't expect this game to be very expensive. But if it has that kind of interaction, I I'll take a flyer on it. I think I think the main selling point is going to try and be how a person that is deaf navigates through what appears to be New York City or some sort of other large urban metropolis. And I think the main character, don't correct me, I mean, at least this is from my perspective, but it seems like your main character is deaf. Did, did I not just say that? I must have totally missed that. I apologize. Maybe, maybe, you're, the one, maybe you're the one who needs to get your hearing checked. Oh, d- trust me. D- my hearing has been shot since I was a toddler. <laughs> This yeah. is not new. <laughs> yeah, Nick, I, I, I to go to go off of what you said, I I don't have your uh, confidence. Uh, I, I understand it's going to be a short game, but I'm I'm expecting that sixty dollar price tag. I don't expect it to be cheaper. I'm expecting a thirty dollar price tag, and I still think that would probably be too much. <laughs> I would let's just wait. I would like that. I don't expect that. I yeah. expect a sixty dollar game. And I expect a lot of irate gamers to be talking about how they did not get their money's worth. I mean, they can't do as bad as Detroit Become Human, right? Yes. yes Hey-o! Uh, Just Cause 4, which looks about as zany as all the others. <laughs> that stuck out like a store thumb, didn't it? I mean, you go from one whimsical RPG fantasy game to another, and then it's just like explosions and deb- dubstep. Yeah, <laughs> and, so, and suddenly the base drops, and you have explosions and indestructible environments in this like GTA almost like, sort of game. Yeah, it's the a only sandbox thing, game personified. The only thing that was missing was Skrillex coming out and being like, "All right, that was nice." Drop the base. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what was the what? Were, what did they announce regarding uh, Nier Automata? I'm like, what did, was it DLC? It, it, yeah, it, it's a complete edition. It's the complete yeah. edition coming out on Xbox One. Okay, all right. I because I, I saw I saw news about that. And I'm like, isn't that game already out? So I had I thought it was DLC, but and so it is. It it, it showed up during the Xbox conference too, or the Microsoft conference, where it's basically just Nier Automata with all the DLC coming out, getting a re-release. It's also showing up on the Xbox One. Okay. So I mean, the fact that they have Nier Automata on the Xbox One is just a, a a showcase of how successful that game is. Yes, and I, I'm eagerly awaiting to uh, starting that game because I have it on on PC. So, looking forward to to that. So, uh, the last thing they showed Square Enix was Kingdom Hearts three, and uh, I think I will let Shanna take it from here. I'm gonna, <laughs> All right, I, I'm gonna put. Pa- I- I'm gonna put. Pa- he just set it down on the ground and just took like three steps back, I, his I, arms up. I'm I'm gonna put my earplugs in now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to pounce on this like a cat on a mouse, man. Just... Go, go. Uh, I, I, I'm, I am yielding the floor to you. I, I suppose uh, well, it's just going to be you and me, Shauna. <laughs> Let's do this. Yeah, I mean, from the moment that they showed those little, they kind of gave you a, a landscape to get ready for this because they you saw the little crowns in the background. Keith David's talking about keyblades, and I'm just like, Let's do this. Oh my god. Let's do this. Keith David speaks and already the entire audience is moist. Yeah, so. well, I think he did the voiceovers for the entire uh, for the entire conference. Yeah, he did. I think. He did. Yeah. Um but yeah, I think and there's been several teasers leading up to this. There's been several times that we've gotten little taste of Kingdom Hearts 3 that they've dropped little bombs online here and there. And I think the biggest thing that fans are excited about is the flood doors had been opened to the Pixar and their 3D animated universes, which let's be fa- let's face it, it was a smart move because as much as we love the Disney Renaissance universes and the classic Disney, we couldn't go back to Aladdin and the Little Mermaid and Peter Pan again. They've been done to death in all of the myriad of Kingdom Hearts games that have come out. So they've given us a whole bunch of new worlds to get excited about. Toy Story, Monsters, Inc., Frozen, Tangled. Um, Wreck-It Ralph. Wreck-It Ralph. He's in it as a summon. And I also think it was smart to do that because obviously there's going to be a big generational gap. 
Uh, the first game came out, what, 20 years ago, something like mm -hmm. that? And it played on, I think, our nostalgia. I'm, I'm calling it right now. P Kingdom Hearts 3 gave us all of the Pixar stuff. I'm calling Kingdom Hearts 4, we're getting Star Wars. Oh, we better. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so... so I'm calling it now. I, so I just want to r remind the audience... Of, the, of of a small factoid, when Disney got bought bought Marvel, this was way back in like 2010 or whatever. The people who were making Kingdom Hearts went to Disney literally the next day and said, "Can we use Marvel?" So there is not there's there not there's a non-zero chance there's Marvel characters mm -hmm. that will show up. It's either background heroes or as summons in Kingdom Hearts three. I, <laughs> I, I, I was kind of thinking they were going to hold those off until after Kingdom Hearts three to kind of ground the to have something to ground the next part of the franchise in. Since I think Kingdom Hearts three is going to be mostly Pixar for the new stuff, but who the hell knows? Like they could just they could go Smash Bros Ultimate and just be like everything Disney has ever made all at once. We'll, we'll, we'll cover that later. later. Well, the thing too is like if they do it as a summon, that's fine because then you can just have the adventure show up as a summon, and that that would be it. That's all you need to do, so, and that would get people so excited just because, like. All of their, all of the Marvel superheroes that the Western media has been consuming for the past 10, 10 15 years are in, Kingdom show, are, are in Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, I agree. Technically, they have done that before because um, Simba from The Lion King was a summon in the first game in Kingdom Hearts 1, which, thanks, Brian, just corrected that it came out 16 years ago in 2002. But... The year I graduated. The year I graduated as well. <laughs> um... But yeah, then in Kingdom Hearts 2, you actually do go to Pride Rock and get to run around with Simba. So they could easily start bringing in these characters as summons so, and so just, hold so off to, on building that world. So just to point, point a little thing out, so King, every, every entry we get of Kingdom Hearts expands on how much of Disney and what counts as Disney that they're going to bring in. When are they going to start doing that with Square Enix and we get some Chrono Trigger in there? Oh, I know. If we if we if we are counting Pixar and Marvel as Disney, then why can't we count Chrono Trigger and Dragon Quest as Squi as Final Fantasy? Come on. Because the square the, the Japanese audiences will have a conniption fit. <laughs> Although um, there is a non Final Fantasy character in one of the games, um, I can't remember his name, but the main character from The World Ends with You. Oh. Um, is in one of Sora? the games. No, yeah, no, there's going to be a world end with you, uh, world, I believe, in Kingdom Hearts 3. <clears throat> so, which I'm so excited for. Oh my god. I'm, I need to stop being that excited. But, it, but it's, <laughs> it's, but it's, but get it's, Ronnie some Kleenex. I but love it. But it's just Tetsuya Nomura's other brainchild that came out between I, Kingdom Hearts. I love the world end with you so much. So, yeah. Now, that's one interesting thing that we didn't see in any of the uh, trailers. So we know Pixar, and we know the Disney franchises. We know that Pirates is coming back. I didn't see a lick of Final Fantasy characters. Nope. Not a single oh. one I saw. I couldn't help but think, like, okay, I would have to think that the bros from 15 are in this. How could they not? I mean, that was just interesting. I'm like, are they holding that back? Or are we not going to see that until the game comes out? The only Square Enix thing I've seen for Kingdom Hearts 3 so far is the, is the World Ends With You stuff for Kingdom Hearts 3, which was not in this conference. It was an in older thing that they yeah. did. Mm -hmm. And that's it. They Nothing. could. I wonder if they do Final Fantasy XV's world as a hub world. They could, but it's a very modern world. Yeah, yeah but, so, but there's no real tech given for... Sora, Sora, and, and Sora's world. So, like, we don't know the tech level for them. Like, they could be relatively modern, too. Well, up until now, okay, Shauna, you can correct me because I'm not fully up on my Kingdom Hearts lore. But all up until up until now, not counting the world ends with you because we've seen that's a world. But 
everything for Square Enix up until now all came from Hollow Bastion, right? There, like, yes. there is there aren't any Final Fantasy worlds in any of the games. It's no. all just there's the survival. Yeah, as far as I've played, I mean, there's a couple of games I haven't played, but from everything that I've played, there's never been a world from the Final Fantasy universe in there. They're, they usually all tie them back to Hollow Bastion. Yeah, and they're treating The World Ends With You like it's a Disney franchise mm -hmm. rather than a Square Enix one because it's getting its own world with characters. Yes. So who knows? Maybe we will, but I think it's more likely that we'll see the Final Fantasy 15 characters as major NPCs the way the other Final Fantasy characters have kind of been up until now. Exactly. I would also love to see them actually pull out a Warrior of Light or something, one of these games. Because oh, I think, what I mean, really, what's the oldest, in terms of games, character that has showed up in Kingdom Hearts? I want to say it was Setzer. I was going to say, I know Six had... From Final Fantasy VI? Yeah, Set Setzer, and I'd have to look it up, but didn't Terra make an appearance at one point? I, I think know. those. I think those are the only... I think that's the oldest. I don't think I've seen anybody from 4, I haven't seen anybody from 5, and nothing old, and obviously nothing older than that at this point. Yeah, so that would be an interesting move too, but again, we didn't... That's the one thing we didn't see in any of the trailers. I... We got all Disney on this one. I would kill to see Rydia in Final Fantasy in Final Fantasy in Kingdom Hearts 3. Oh. Ooh. I would be so well, happy. Is, is it baby Rydia or is it or is it one year old one one year mentally older, ten years older physically, Rydia? I'm fine either way. She's my favorite character in the franchise. Whether she's the sassy little girl, basically realm. Or if Final Fantasy One's Warrior of Light was in Dream Drop Distance. Thank you. Thank you for proving us all wrong, Brian. Ah, uh, yeah. I never finished that one, so my uh, bad. So, well, so, then, well. <laughs> the, so, uh, so what you're saying is we, we need to go and play the Kingdom Hearts Super Ultra Mega 2.8 edition, which has what? all the all yeah. the flipping PSP and DS games in it. I'm What's already working on What Brian's telling play. us is that we all need to play Dream Drop, Drop Distance because we are all noobs because we missed that game. <laughs> so, uh, he's continuing. <laughs> Brian, <laughs> the, the, the fans cannot read your comments. <laughs> They, they don't. They don't hear the Skype bubble pop up. Yeah, I, I just. I just didn't want to talk over you, so I was. I just wanted to silently prove you guys wrong from the. Uh, Beat off of Brian. What Brian has to do is like get a screenshot of this, just be like, "Eh, fuck you, and eh, fuck you." Warrior eh, Light was in Dream Drop Distance, as was Cecil and Bart. Thank you, Brian, for fact checking us. As as was Locke and Sellers. I was gonna say, I I, I could have sworn that you were we were talking about the, the Final Fantasy VI characters. I'm like. Didn't they show up in another game in the Kingdom Hearts franchise? Yeah, they have, so, they have so many dumb games that are not the number titles. They're just like 358 slash 2, Dream Dot Dristens, Birth Dristens. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, you know, I know it was a flub by Ron, but knowing all the fucking odd titles for each game in this series, Dream Drop Dristens might have been one of them, you know? Yeah, Birth by Sleep or whatever? I don't remember. You know, I, I there's some they've but, had some really weird times. Yeah, birth by afterbirth. I don't know. It's you know, <laughs> two point no, one eight. That, that's, a, that's a fighting game. <laughs> well, I'm just looking at because uh, I've pulled up a list of all of the Kingdom Hearts characters that have appeared in uh, all the Final Fantasy characters that have appeared in the Kingdom Hearts franchise, and yeah, just. You know, Locke, Sellas, Cecil, Bartz, Warrior of Light, they were all in uh, Dream Drop Distance, as was Squall. Well, Squall's been in a bunch of them. Squall's been in since okay. the beginning. Yeah. All right, um, I get it. That's the one I didn't play, Dream Drop Distance. I'll get there. I was going to say, uh, <laughs> just, just to Ron, Kingdom Hearts HD 2.18 Final Chapter Prologue. And yeah. There's a final mix version of that. That that that's my point. We're getting into Super Ultra Mega Street Fighter 3 editions here. Yeah, yeah, it's like I don't know if some of you saw like a couple weeks ago I posted on Facebook the 11 Kingdom Hearts games in mm -hmm. in in canon order that you if, that from Before Kingdom Hearts 3. 
before the third one. Yeah. <laughs> And it's like, also, King, it's like Kingdom Hearts One is like the fifth game canonically. <laughs> also, the 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 my favorite Kingdom Hearts zero point two Birth by Sleep, a fragmentary passage. Yeah, that's my favorite. Uh huh. And I love it. what the sweet buttery <laughs> fuck are you <laughs> thinking? Mora, that's just literally just Tetsuya Nomura. I'm like... with. I fully expect that he that these were like in development like he just chose these random names and he fully expected to have to change them later and the guys up front were just like yeah 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 no that's fine yeah just send it out send it out <laughs> we're good <laughs> just ship it just, it, just slap Working it slap type. it up we're already tight for time let's ship it out here let's go let's go let's go yeah basically so you know you know when this when kingdom hearts 3 comes out allegedly then you know we'll I will probably wind up playing all of the games before it, just so I could remember what the hell is going on. Before I, I fair, <laughs> the last time I played Kingdom Hearts two, I think Bush was in office. Well, you know, I would have to unearth my PS two if I'm going to uh, to play that. But I know they've re they've re released and updated all of them for current gen systems. So I will, I'll, yes. I, I will, which they will be. Which they will be doing again, the Kingdom Hearts Ultimate Collection, which will include Kingdom Hearts 3 on sale now. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> yeah, so I think I may have flubbed. It, the Ultimate Collection is out, but I think it's an upcharge for Kingdom Hearts 3. I'm waiting because I be there. it looked like there's going to be a physical edition of it when Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out, and that's what I'm going for. The, the, yeah, that might, the, by physical yeah. edition, it might literally be a physical PS4 with all the games installed on it. Well, there is going to be a limited edition PS4 um, yeah. Kingdom Hearts version. Brian, Brian, you're crushing my hopes and dreams. I fart in your general direction. Well, allegedly, but <laughs> I want a I want a physical <laughs> Ultimate Collection. I don't want to buy the digital. Oh. but is, give it to it, me. I'm a whiny it, baby. It, 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 is is there anything else from Kingdom Hearts Three news? I, I again. They showed three trailers this E3, and they're all almost exactly the same. <laughs> well, um, the one thing I noticed is in the classic Kingdom Hearts tradition, we have a new Yutada Hikaru song. Yep. Yeah. That's exciting. Always, always a good, always a good thing. Uh, yeah. I saw Ratatouille in it. That yeah, was Ratatouille happy. was an adorable little summon. Who I, I have no idea how that's going to factor into gameplay, but it's like you make something on Flan Bay with Ratatouille sitting on your head. It was adorable. <laughs> it was it's, really cute. I'm on board with that. And um, oh my god, the pirate stuff looks so much, so so not shitty compared to the way they used to look. Did you see Mr. Gibbs? Yes, Mr. I saw Gibbs Mr. was in that trailer. <laughs> And from what I understand, I didn't actually hear it, but the people that were there playing the demo or whatever that they had um, said that the uh, they got a new voice actor to do the Johnny Depp voice, and it's so much better than it used to be. Oh, yeah. It, like, it, it actually sounds correct. It actually sounds like him, because the last one did not. Did not sound all. like him even a little bit. No. Um, another thing I noticed was it looks like Roxas's friends... From the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 2, uh, Hainer, Pence, and Olette are going to be playing some sort of role in this game. I noticed them in the trailer. I, fully I, said, expect, ah. I, say, I fully expect every single living character in Kingdom Hearts, any of the games, to all be in Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, so, so, spoilers. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, Shannon. I expect you to correct me on this. Mm -hmm. Didn't Aqua die? Aqua did not die. Or at least, unless... I could be wrong. Maybe something happened in Dream Drop Distance. Nope. <laughs> but she's trapped in the darkness. Yeah, from what I recall from the uh, from Birth by Sleep, she gets tracked basically where Sora and Riku ended up at the end of Kingdom Hearts Two. She's in the the dark world. Oh, yeah. uh, okay. She actually met Mickey in the dark world. Um, one of the prequel things. I don't know if it was Fragmentary Passage or, or actually it might be Dream Drop Distance actually because I know this. I've been told the story of that one, even though I haven't played it. But I know that uh, Mickey, when he was in the Dark World, met Aqua. Because I just remember th 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 her showing up, being like, "Okay, I know who you are because my friend, my friend's a big Kingdom Hearts person, but I don't know why you're here. Please give me a reason to to be like, why are you here? 
it's like, but the trailer doesn't do that. It just shows you them talking to Mickey, and it's just like this is an important detail. This is an important reveal. But for literally everyone, like ninety five percent of the audience, they're like, "Who the hell is this blue haired woman?" They made a game about her. I know, but no one. <laughs> but like again, unless you're a Kingdom Hearts diehard fan, you have no idea who this person is. Yeah, you don't if know you're who not, she is. Kingdom Hearts is a series that does not give a single shit about anybody who's not a diehard fan. I'm sorry to say it, but they just don't. And, and, and keep you're right. Mind, like, this started as a very dumb idea being like, what would happen if we did Final Fantasy stuff with, with Disney? They're making it as accessible as possible to play all the games by continuously really re-releasing them so there's never... A, like, they're not... I don't even know if they even make their money back on them at this point. They're just going, we're making sure every game story is always accessible to you. So you have no excuse not to know who the fuck these people are because we're not going to tell you. You had better play the game with that character. You do your fucking you homework. Who they are. You do your fucking homework. You can't do trigonometry until you know basic division. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. And they set that precedent right at the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 2. Because when you first start playing that game and you just watch the intro of that game, you're like, what the hell is this? Yeah. I mean, you go yeah. right up until... You yeah, played Chain of Memories or you have no idea. Yeah, yeah you, you didn't play Chain of Memories, you did not know what was going on. Like, why is Sora being trapped in this bu bubble and who is this blonde child drawing all over the place? And they're like, oh, I needed to play another game apparently to know what this is. Yeah. <laughs> I, I appreciate that, okay, they are not going to waste anybody's time, for better or worse, but I appreciate that they keep all the games accessible, regardless of, like, these were all on different platforms, we're all, but we're going to put them all on this one where the new one is, so that you have no, that you will always be able to play them, and I appreciate yeah. the heck okay. and, and so usually, And usually, as you know, I don't like when developers do that, however, for a for a series as batshit convoluted as Kingdom <laughs> Hearts is, I will make an exception this once. I know, earth shattering, I know, but it just... So the, so the one thing I want to see in Kingdom Hearts 3, I, here, here's what I want to see occur in Kingdom Hearts 3. You, you start playing the game, and, like, you know, Jimmy Cricket's like your... your your guy that's taking notes and all the monsters and shit like that. I would love for you him to be like, oh, by the way, I found my old research journals. If you have any questions, we can go through them. And it just gives you basic synopsis of every fucking character you've missed. So that way, even if you haven't played them, you can still get the, the Cliff Notes version of who the fuck all these characters Ron, are. Ron, are you saying that you don't want to do your homework? They yes, can't, I, I don't can't want just, to do my homework. Give me the Cliff Notes version. I want can't to just, just play give here. You, this is the problem with children today. We can't just give you an A for effort. You gotta put in the work, Ron, if you want to get a result. Fucking fuck millennials. You, I, fuck you. I want to be able to smash things with a giant metal pipe with some pointy ends on it. I mean... Ron, I will say you're absolutely right. If there's a way to do it, I mean, it's built right in the game. Jimmy Cricket's right there. Yeah. You're absolutely right. <laughs> and like, so it's, and the reason why I'm saying, okay, the reason why I'm saying this is because there's another game I play called Guilty Gear. It's a fighting game. There's actually oh, yeah. a fairly intricate story in the back of it. In the more recent games, they included a giant glossary term dictionary. So you can go like, whenever these characters say something, you can then go and look up what the fuck they're saying. Yeah. The, the only reason Jiminy Cricket couldn't give you the story for the previous games is the same reason that Samus loses all of her upgrades every time we start a new Metroid game. Because, Just, because, <laughs> because, because balance. Because balance. Be because reasons. Um, so, uh, the, the, the compilation you're referring to, is that the uh, 1.5 plus 2.5? No, plus there's the going, prologue. Yeah. There, no, there's going to be a new one with Kingdom Hearts 3 as part of it, and possibly the other games that came out since that one. If memory serves, it's the, the compilation deal is Kingdom Hearts 1.5 Final Mix plus Kingdom Hearts 2.8 
whatever final mix term they use for it. Where it's basically just like 1.5 is Kingdom Hearts 1 and Chain of Memories. Kingdom Hearts 2 is all of the Kingdom Hearts 2 related stuff. And then it has like 30 minute cinematics for two of the games and then the full PSP ports of Train Drop Distance and Birth by Sleep, I think. Okay, because I, I was, uh, as I haven't seen anything to that effect. I knew about the one point five and the two point five, you know, compilation, but I did not hear anything about this Kingdom Hearts Ultimate Super Mega Fuck Your Mother Edition compilation. I just, I'm I'm just calling it Ultimate because I didn't catch the name of it either, but it was mentioned at E three this year. It was, it was yeah. It was, it was during the, the the whole thing of like. You can get Kingdom Hearts 3 on like 5 million consoles, and if you have any, no idea who the fuck these characters are, well, here's these three things we can also sell you too. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping the new compilation includes Dream Drop Distance as a playable game. That would be excellent. I but, believe I believe it's Birth by Sleep and Dream Drop Distance are the, uh, the additional playables, and then they give you cinematic trailers of 358 slash 2, and then... Type zero. Yeah, they whatever. turned 358 by two into a movie. That's what they did. Yeah. And then they, they, they turned another one. Or over two movie. days. Sorry. 358 yeah. over two days. All right. The Mega XL bundle features Kingdom Hearts 1.5, which will have Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, Kingdom Hearts Fan Memories, Kingdom Hearts 358 2 Days, 2.5 Remix, which will have Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix, Birth by Sleep, and Recoded. They will also have Kingdom Hearts 2.8, uh, Final Chapter Prologue. Uh, Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance HD, Kingdom Hearts Point Two Birthday Sleep. Good lord! <laughs> so, I, I think every single Kingdom Hearts game. <laughs> oh, good Christ! All right, one of those. I know one of those has a movie of the uh, the cell phone game as well because the story in that is actually relevant. It's right. the Keyblade War. That's what the cell phone game is. Yeah. All right. Probably recoded then. Or yeah, that, that's, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Or that X Chi uh, Unchained. Are, 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 are we are we done with Kingdom Hearts? Can we move off of, off of Square Enix now? Please? Yeah, we we, we, we spent forty minutes on Square Enix, and we, I think we still have three more conferences before we hit Nintendo for the third half. That's why I want to move on. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So uh, moving right along, go then to uh, <laughs> to Ubisoft, which was what just... year is it? Moving on to Ubisoft, which was basically with Assassin, Dancing Panda. with uh, with Assassin's Creed the Everything. Uh, no, no, it's Dancing no. Pandas. That's the no. that's the press conference, Brian. <laughs> so li listen, I, Ubisoft is a, is an interesting company. At the end of last year's E3, there was a good chance they weren't going to be around next year because they were they were probably going to get bought out by Activision. I think. No, Vivendi. Vivendi, thank you. But they had a really strong year and were able to basically push off the, the Vivendi buyout. Yeah, the hostile takeover. Yeah. And so they came into this year's E3 rather in, in a rather celebratory mood. So how else do you celebrate by having a giant dancing panda come in with a live band to show off your game of Just Dance? And considering how hot it was in L.A. that week, I feel bad for the person in that panda costume. Listen, I, that, I man, started. <laughs> that man in the panda suit, yeah, that man the panda suit got paid double. Yeah, I I started this by pulling by when I started the Ubisoft conference and saw what was happening. I paused it, went back to the beginning, and pulled my wife in who had no idea what was going on and went, "This is a video game. Tell me when you figure out what it is," and just started it. It took I, her, like, two-thirds of the way through to fight, figure out it was Just Dance. I, as soon as I saw them starting to dance and do music, I knew it was Just Dance. And yeah. the entire time this this is playing, it's on mute, and I still know it's Just Dance. This is it's so awkward and dumb, but it's perfect for the game, and I love that it exists. They did I'm a good job that... at dancing. I'm glad that they did open up with Just Dance first to just kind of say, it exists. Get it out of the way. Nope. Moving on to the next topic. Don't they always open with Just Dance? 
It's usually I don't the, think it's last the, year. I think it was like midway. Was I could be wrong on that. It's usually like one of their first three titles that you, is usually yeah. just. I feel like they opened with it last year too, but I could be wrong. I, I think I, Ubisoft understands that Just Dance is not a game for everyone. However, they understand that the fans of it, excuse the, me, are very diehard. So they, so I think they realize for their conference, if you do this colorful display of music and dancing mm-hmm. relatively early on. People can enjoy it before compared to having it be an awkward thing in the middle of a conference for you. Like, the audience was still game, having none of it. Game. Just dance! Serious game, serious game, serious game. It breaks up the flow weirdly, whereas doing it in the beginning, you can go, fun times, yay, yay, yay. And then you go into some of the more serious stuff because they go from Just Dance into Beyond Good and Evil 2. Yep. Yeah. This looks like, holy shit. Which is a prequel? Yes. Prequel. Yes. It's a prequel. It is a prequel. And they go from this like happy cheery thing into this very like space opera cinematic trailer and it ends the trailer with us seeing Jade. Which makes a lot of the people go, What the fuck is going on here? Well, it's because Jade was looking very intense and evil and fierce and Paige, which good to see Paige again, her uh, her piggy uncle. He says her name and looks at her just like, what, Jade? And then you're like, oh, shit. So. Yeah. And it's just like, wait, what, what, what's going on here? Why is Jade here? I thought this was a prequel. Like. <laughs> and not only that, but why does our heroine suddenly look like she's on the bad guy side at the moment? Yeah, why, why is it? Why is the person fighting against the megalomaniac empire on the bad guy side? Well, maybe we'll find out why. I know, but they're doing an interesting other thing, too, with Beyond Good and Evil 2. They're doing. Their partnership with oh, what's the name of the company? Hit Record. Hit Record, yeah. Where they're going to have the people that do the Hit, hit Record is going to have the the community do like graffiti music to get in, actually embedded into the game itself. Now it's not yep. they're actually paying the people to do it too. It's not just free. I, I know, but it, it's it's an open invite for content creation. It, what a cheap way to get extra stuff for your game. Yeah, they did say they are paying people for it. It's not just going to be literally free. But I, still, I know, it's but... Cheap. It's still cheap, I agree. But to get Joseph Gordon-Levitt, it, 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 was, it was kind of a little bit of a surprise. Yeah. Um, and then after that, it was... Division 2. Yeah, or Division 2 stuff. No, Division 2 was much later. What was it? You had Rainbow Six the next season, okay. which was more competitive tournaments, whatnot. And then you had Trials Rising, which <laughs> is that biking game. The, 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 the biking body flailing simulator. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I didn't take any notes on either of those. That's why I went straight to Division 2. I uh, literally <laughs> just... I literally just wrote Excite Bike 2018. Next <laughs> <to the laughs> you're, you're not wrong. You know what? It's not wrong. <laughs> okay, wait. I, I have one thing I will say about this game. They There is a YouTuber who his whole channel was teaching people how to play this game. The, the first one. How to play the game. How to learn the systems. How everything works. They got, they hired him to do the tutorials for the new game. Which, and that I was think cool. That's, awesome. that's pretty cool, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and again, like, this, this is a thing that I think was meant to be present throughout all of E3, the Ubisoft's conference, is they they want to try and show that they, they care about their audience because if it wasn't for them, they wouldn't still be around. They, everything, though, I feel like Ubisoft wanted a lot of fan engagement. Yeah, and the Beyond Good and Evil two may have backfired a little bit on the fan engagement, but I still think like they didn't mean anything negative by it. Yeah, I think the the idea was coming was coming from a good place. It's just the execution might have fallen a little short. Yeah. Also, playing the Blue Danube at the end of the Trials uh, demo was an appropriate musical choice. Yes. Oh God. <laughs> just, just, oh, dude. If if you if you need to sell someone on your game, and you have no idea how to do it, just show them that Blue Danube portion to be like, here's everything the game's about: cool biking, it, it, 
flips and, and spectacular Fails. wrecks. So then on to Division 2, which I do like the new post-game content with the unique equipment and, and career paths or class uh, or class um, choosing, I guess. Uh, a player co-op, which, okay, raids. It's totally not Destiny. It's totally not Destiny in a, in a modern setting. What are you talking about? This is... This is this is this is his own thing. This is, I, it's it's destiny. It's just destiny with, with an alternate history setting. But it it's fine. I I think the game. I think they took the feedback from they got they got from the first division game. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to incorporate it into division two. Try and give it more longevity. Yeah, because I, I feel like they wanted Division to be a longer game, but just didn't turn into that. Just due Division, to Division, Division was okay. It was just not great. I I got the game for free and gave it a shot, and it just didn't have enough engagement. So yeah. I think that's what they're trying to do with Division Two. I, I think that's what they're trying to do do as well. I I, I think the idea behind it is. Once you go through the story, you can then choose how you want to play and get like perks and, and weapons out of it with the class system, which I think is a thing pe- their fans had requested was to be able to like customize their character a little bit more. Do do me a favor, guys. Wake me up when we're done talking about the division two. I'm gonna go take a nap. I think we're done. Uh, that, that, uh, was, yeah. that was all I want to say on it, honestly. Yeah, March fifteenth release date. The people who like division. Uh, one will probably get Division Two. I don't really see them expanding their audience. Yeah. Um, what, after we have the the, the we have the um the Mario Rabbit Hope performance. Yes. Yeah, this was, was awesome. When I said they had the best and the worst, this is the right way to do a performance. Have the guys doing the music for the game do music for the game, and behind them show ga- show a new gameplay trailer. That's the way to do it. Yeah. So the, the new DLC coming out for Mario Rabbids. They've got Donkey Kong in a little side mission with him in the Rabbids. Although, like, I guess the DLC is pretty long. They were saying, like, eight hours, which, yeah. okay. That's, yeah, like, it, it's, it's, it's a whole side story. Like yeah, It's like it's, another third of the third of the game, like. Yeah. Also, Cranky Rabbid, I love it. <laughs> I know! <laughs> I, I just, I saw that, I'm just like... This is me. It's like it's, it's not, <laughs> maybe, I, maybe not. It's, it's a slightly more hairy version of me. I think Mario Rabbids is the underrated gem of the Switch library, and That's I am so ready for more of it to come out. I, I, I think it's also a game too that people look at this and go, "How can this exist?" And then they, they play it and they go, "I'm glad this exists." Yeah, how Absolutely. can this exist? I agree. It's 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 you go through the reverse stages of grief like denial first like how can this exist how is this a thing then you go to anger how could nintendo do this they're ruining their franchise and eventually you get to acceptance oh, this is a really good game i'm glad they made this and, well and, the fact that they based it off of kind of XCOM light certainly helped yeah yes it, but but again if you take a solid core gameplay, which is the XCOM basically, the tactical shooter stuff, and then you have this childish, cartoony physics world to play around in, you can get some pretty funny things that happen out of it. I'll be honest, I would rather play Mario Rabbids than XCOM, and maybe that makes me a heathen, but... Well, as someone who has not played XCOM because the initial concepts kind of turned turned him off to see kind of the intro to what XCOM is with Mario and Rabbids makes me interested and intrigued to maybe try XCOM yeah. later when I have more free now, time. I so, know. Yep. Sorry. Uh, no, I pretty much made my point. Okay. I was going to say, I know that Mario Rabbids is more is Ubisoft, not Nintendo. Um, but like Nintendo has been branching out into all these genres it's never done before you got splatoon nintendo doing a shooter you have uh freaking arms nintendo trying to do a traditional fighting game 
Yeah, like you, you have all this. <laughs> you use that term traditional very loosely. Yeah, yes, but yeah, I, I mean not a Smash fighting game. Like they're they're trying all these new things out, and I feel like Mario Rabbids is basically Nintendo's tactical tactics are like branch. Like I feel like they're like well, you know, we've dominated this thing, so why don't we make Nintendo branded? entries in every other genre and everything they're throwing is a freaking at least minor hit and i'm like i just keep doing this just keep pat keep keep well, tossing new ips nintendo i'm gonna catch every one of them you just keep throwing well, them at it was it was just good clever marketing on ubisoft's part of trying to get nintendo to get on board with this it was really a lot on ubisoft to really make to make this a success so i, I give more credit to ubisoft than nintendo nintendo really just wrote off the i consent yeah. forms yeah oh, no, i agree yeah, yeah. And, and and they showed that I feel like how Ubisoft handled Mario Rabbids and the relatively positive feedback that came out of it, both from a both from a review standpoint and a, and a sales standpoint, led to them agreeing to have Star Fox showing up in their Starlink game. Yeah. Or, oh, do not even get me started on that. Oh, you We're mean not there yet? Oh, yeah. The. Uh... <laughs> Also, I think the thing that that stuck out to me the most because we, I mean, obviously we haven't even touched Assassin's Creed yet. But uh, also, uh, props to Ubisoft for single-handedly keeping the Wii and Wii U alive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, Just chance uh, still on the Wii. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, I, I I saw that and I went. Ben messaged me, Nick. Uh, ben was like, "Yeah, <laughs> uh, Just Dance is coming out on the Wii," and I went, "Wait, what?" <laughs> I'm like, Nintendo is allowing somebody to make a game for their very dead consoles? And Ben's like, yeah, but it's going to make Nintendo money. I said, I don't care. Ben, you know just as well as I do that Nintendo has no problems leaving money on the table. <laughs> yeah. But, so so a after after um, the Mario the DLC, Rabbids DLC... It was it Starlink or was it something else? No, Skull and Bones. Oh, Skull and Bones, right, 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 Skull and Bones. This, this definitely caught my interest from the moment it was announced last year of having this, basically, the Assassin's Creed 4 pirate gameplay as its own standalone game with online multiplayer, the ability to customize your ships. Uh, varying weather, ocean, uh, the oceans can vary, which will determine what you can pillage or or enemy ships you can run into. You know, if you want to pick a day that's maybe not as good weather, you may not run into as much competition, but now you have to deal with rougher waters, you, you know, or or, or uh, you know more hazardous conditions. And you really have to pick your allies because, yeah, you can invite allies to help you. Then they might turn on you in an instant to go get your treasure. It's going to be a very cat and mouse type game. And I, I'm really looking forward uh, to Skull and Bones. And I, I'm I'm waiting to see what they'll do for betas and whatnot. And, and hopefully we'll get a release date sometime in 2019, but obviously not now. I believe it said 2019, but I thought it was like I think they implied to be like late 2019. Yeah, they, they, they didn't all say they, 2019. All they, said, all they have said is 2019. That's it. And it was supposed to be 2018. It definitely has pushed quite a long ways. Uh, there was also transference, which uh, right that, the, the, that, the, the Elijah a, Wood. That, that, that's a 40. That's 40 pounds of dope in a two pound bag. No. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Brian. Brian, that, that's your game. That's your game, Brian. Yeah, a little. <laughs> a drop. I have to look. I have to look more about this. But uh... the idea behind it is, it's a PS4 and VR game where you play as an individual who is trapped in the memories of a family, and you need to try and figure a way out of the memories before you get consumed by them? It's... It's, 
it's apparently it's apparently you know there's a family struggling with some some serious issues uh they were it was set inside a like a sort of like a corrupted simulation made by a scientist in like the early 2000s i think or 1999 something like that yeah it, it, it's really weird it's super creepy Pe most people i saw that they were talking looking at this going like this looks creepy as all fuck it looks amazing but i am not going to touch it with that football yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm hoping, obviously, you know, that we have a, a lack, because uh, I'm not playing, I'm not putting on a VR headset. I will puke in about four seconds. So, that's... Yeah, I, I believe, I believe they said it was both PS4 and PS4 VR. Well, okay. It's also coming out for PC. Okay, that's good. Which, yes. <laughs> yes, good, good. <laughs> um... But that that did look interesting, um, and yeah, the the only other thing that that is sticking out in my brain was was Assassin's Creed Odyssey. <clears throat> yes, Starlink to Starlink. Yeah. Okay, so from what was shown, the gameplay looks fine. The peripheral stuff is dumb. It's just it's it's a worse version of Skylanders, and even Skylanders is moving away from that because they realize they've kind of milked the franchise for all it's worth. And we didn't need another Skylanders type game. Yeah, we didn't. But this is but through Ubisoft, we get our yearly Miyamoto appearance as he's in the audience randomly, and he gets presented with a, a one of the a, a Star Fox peripheral prototype yeah i was gonna say I, I, I know we haven't gotten a nintendo yet but i was like did they did they do their annual unfreezing uh cryogenic unfreezing of miyamoto to, for his appearance but i don't remember him in the nintendo i think he only no, showed he wasn't ubisoft. he was only in ubisoft yeah okay well yeah. I mean, they, they did thaw him though so you know they thawed yeah. him and lent him out yeah but it, it was really weird because like he he was like He's in the he's in the show, but like he looks more supposed just to be there as an audience member. He and he looks surprised that he was even being presented with anything. Yeah, because he didn't even it, have like a mic on him. Awkward. Yeah, he didn't, have, he didn't have a mic on him or nothing. So it's just kind of like why? If this was if this was planned, you did a poor job of it. If it was unplanned, why didn't you run a mic out to him at least so he could at least give give his his sugoi exclamation about getting the, the peripheral for free to not be picked up on like very poor Mike's headsets that are not attached to him. Eh? <laughs> I don't know. I don't either. And I think I, I think this was a it was a more of a spur of the moment thing and <clears throat> they didn't really think it through. Like, like quick, no. quick, get him out there! <laughs> yeah. Do we the, just want to take the shot in the arm for Assassin's Creed now? I mean, it's, it's, it's Assassin's Creed's this last thing they showed, though, after this the Starlink thing, I think, though. Yeah, well, they did show Crew too, but I don't care. I don't no. think anyone cares. Not really. <laughs> um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. We're in ancient Greece. Hooray! I, I I'm glad they they went with the full 300 references with the, the with the Sparta kick and that they're referencing Leonidas so much. I I appreciate that Ubisoft in one single move created female equality in video games. Yes. All the problems are over now. Everywhere it's now now we're allowed to play a female character in Assassin's Creed. It's. It, Liberation has come. That's we're, we're done now. And Finish. they shoved her in your face. They were like, you can play as this guy or this woman. Look at this woman. I mean, they put her in every cut scene that they showed. Yep. It really felt like they were trying to you mean, overcompensate you, you, the last you, year. You mean designing uh, a female character isn't hard? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I also love how people were like, after the trailer came out, people are looking at it and going like, why is there gay lesbian undertones in this game? This didn't happen in Agent Greece. <laughs> anyone, <laughs> did anyone with the history, like any any brief knowledge of history, just looks at them and goes, "You're a goddamn idiot." 
that social justice warriors are putting gay people in my Assassin's Creed, man. I want it to be accurate to history. I want historical Jesus. accuracy. Gay in my people history. didn't exist before the 1980s. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, fuck! They practically invented it for crying out loud. It's you know, <laughs> it's like so. Someone, um, someone literally, I saw like a, a thread being like. Weren't the Greeks Christians? Why would they? No! Have all those stuff? I'm just like, I'm just like, do you understand where the Greek gods come from? Uh, wow. just, uh, oh my god! Just, weren't just weren't the, the Greeks Christians? Yes, like a couple thousand years later. <laughs> oh, I just oh. The thing about history is that keeps going. Yeah, <laughs> like I, it, it, I like I saw that, and I it was one of those moments where it's like I'm so sorry that public school failed you so badly. I will <laughs> say, I am I have never played a single Assassin's Creed game, but watching Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I am strangely interested. I have no idea if I will pick it up, but I've always liked ancient Greece. I like the fact that you play a female character as much as I'm poking fun at how they shove it in our faces. Like, it should be just... It should just be there. It shouldn't have been a question. It, it should, it should, it should, it should, it should just be... Has... Here's, a, here's a guy. Here's a girl. You can play as either one. Have fun. How hard is that? It shouldn't be hard. But either way, I, I've always liked yeah. Ancient Greece. I like being able to play a female character. I like what I saw of the game. I don't know if I'll pick it up, but this is one of the first times I've actually been tempted to pick up an Assassin's Creed game. So I, 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 I'm, I'm tempted to pick it up solely on the fact that there are people out there who genuinely believe that homosexuality did not exist in ancient Greece. <laughs> I'm You're tempted. buying it out of spite. You're buying it out of spite. I, I, I will happily buy it out of spite. So I will give was... Ubisoft money out of spite. Yes. Well, you might have to do that for The Last of Us 2, but we're not there yet. We're, we're not there yet. I still have to finish yeah. the first one. But that, that's... So... Anyway. Yeah. Yes, we're not so the there. thing, too, is that it seems like from what was shown, they're trying to include what they did with Assassin's Creed Origins, where it's mostly realistic in terms of setting and things like that. But there's hints of magic and mysticism that they're going to harken back to the um, things implied to have been shown during the original Assassin's Creed trilogy. Um, because, for example, there was um, giant snakes in Origins that were like bosses that wouldn't normally exist or made to exist because of stuff. And then we saw hints of the Minotaur being in, in uh, Odyssey as well. So, uh, anything more about Ubisoft? No, I think I'm good. I'm good. All right, cause I we... will say, I think it was the most gimmicky of all of the, of all the you press You either loved it or you hated it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So, you know, uh, we are going to go into a third half on this, because we still have Sony and Nintendo left to go. Oh, uh, you're, so you're skipping one gaming for me. show. And the PC yeah. Gaming Show, yes, yes, you're right, you're well, right. Well, PC Gaming Show can cover relatively quickly because I, it won't take long. Yeah, yeah, that's that's that fine by me. But we still have we have those three, and that's what we're going to do in the third and maybe final half, third, whatever, <laughs> math. So <laughs> you're gonna have another break because we just can't contain this in two halves. So you are potentially still listening to the E3 recap of downloadable content. Ryan, 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 they're still they're still out there. I know. I'm watching. So we'll be back.